What's up? What's up, everybody? Michael Johnson here with the Business Choreography Podcast, and I'm excited that you're here today because we have a very special guest today. We are so lucky and privileged to have with us Marianne Pruitt. Marianne is an amazing human, and I can't wait to share her with you and share all the cool things that she's up to. She is the CEO and president of Mosaic Media, a collection of media buying experts and creative strategists who negotiate, purchase, and monitor advertising space and airtime. She's here today to share some of the marketing wisdom that she's gleaned from her long career in media strategy and how it relates to the ever-evolving climate of media. Guys, we are so lucky to have her here today and to be able to have her wisdom and her knowledge. So let's cue the intro and we'll jump right in. Listen, there's a lot to learn when growing and scaling your business. That's why we created the Business Choreography Podcast, where we talk about choreographing your marketing, operations, and sales into dynamic systems that increase your revenue and your impact. We'll explore solid business principles and discuss all things that make businesses dance to success with clarity. We'll help you figure out where the holes are in your business and what you can do to fix them. Think of us as your official business choreographers, aka your insider growth strategists. Remember, your choreography matters. Welcome to the Business Choreography Podcast. Marianne, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Michael. I'm so excited to be on the show. Rock and roll. Well, we've got to dig in. Everybody knows that that uh, I love to start with backstory and share a little bit of your journey and how you got to the place where you're doing all the incredible and wonderful things that you're doing today. So we've got to start from... Well, as much of the beginning as you'd like to share with us, uh, but we want to hear the ups and downs because you know what? It's never a, a straight road. It's always a winding journey. And uh, and we want to know about the good times and the bad. I think that it's so great. Business owners, entrepreneurs, we learn so much more from each other. Sure. And I'm a huge believer. And the more we share, the more we can learn and the more we can learn from each other. So I'm, I really appreciate this for sure. Uh, so my journey, actually, I think like most entrepreneurs started with just being, having an entrepreneurial spirit. I was the kid that was, you know, rewriting jingles and, you know, doing lemonade stands and things like that. But when I, um, I actually got into graphic design uh, early, these were the days before uh, everything being digital. So you'd actually have to draw something. <laughs> wow. Uh, so there, there's that little caveat. But you not only did you have to draw something, but you also had to then, if you wanted to, we got to the technology of scanning something in and then digitizing it. And that was wow. incredible. That was amazing. So, so I started there. And as my journey went on, I actually found myself in media, worked in network television, worked in uh, the marketing side of TV loved it, absolutely fell in love with it, um, and really got my career in media with TV, radio, working for some of the largest brands um, and uh, media companies in the world. And that's where I fell in love with it. But my college career actually was kind of where the two married. I fell in love with economics and data oh and my. marketing. All together. <laughs> and so that made the perfect marriage with media. And so data will always tell us a story if we want it to tell us a story. Of course, like every entrepreneur, you have your, you have your ups and your downs. But my biggest belief is the more you just stick with it and you focus and you work um, and you do what you need to do, you know the answers. Our gut tells us a lot. You actually know it more than you realize. And you just keep going. You learn from others. Find mentors that you want to be like. Find individuals that have been down a journey that you've been down. Find people that have either been where you are or they are where you want to be and learn how they got there. And that's, that's a huge piece of being an entrepreneur. Rock and roll. Yeah. Holy cow. Merging economics, data, and digital media. You know, so many times you get the creative souls out there that are capable of doing the incredible graphics and that media. And they don't want anything to do with economics. And I data. know. So I know. I actually where did that come from? It's so weird. I had at one point, I think it was in my, it was probably in my mid twenties, late twenties. And I was in my career at this point and I was at a conference and they had us take the right brain, left brain test to figure out which one, which one we were more. Right. And, you know, they're like, okay, how many of you are 70% right brain? And you know, <laughs> they start going this and I raised my hand and I go, what if it came out 50, 50? And the teacher looked at me, she goes, are you being serious? I've never had that happen. I don't know. Are you really 50, 50? And sure enough, it came out 50, 50. I think, I think all of us are unique. That's what business teaches sure. us, right? That all of us are unique and that we all have unique thoughts and how our brains work and how we operate. So, and, but here's the thing. 
I, to me, creative is me and media is creative. I am creative and building a strategy for media every day of how do I take a traditional tactic and work it with a digital tactic to creatively pull together what I need to do. It's not just the TV ad. It's not just the radio ad. It's not just the streaming ad. It's not, you know, it's not just the creative that we think of it as, but how I'm reaching that individual has to be creative as well. Right. I loved earlier you talked about the data can always tell us a story if we want right. to. Okay. And I feel like a lot of times entrepreneurs and there's a lot of marketers out there that are talking a lot about telling your story and telling okay. about your path and your journey. But the story that the data is telling you is so fascinating. Talk to me a little bit more about the stories that you get from the data. Yeah. So a big piece of this, and especially for small and medium sized businesses, you the biggest piece that data can tell us a story on is who your customer truly is. And the more that we start to unleash who your true customer is, the better your media and your dollars spent are going to go. So you're going to get I, my biggest pet peeve is wasted dollars. And so when you're diving into data and you're diving into the information that you're gathering and that you're looking at in today's world, we have the opportunity to gather information about our customers think through about what we have been able to do over the last 20, 25 years. When I started 25 years ago, I had only a few options. I could only buy TV, print, radio, and mail, like an outdoor. That's it. That's all I could do. I didn't have the data. We, the data that we had was what magazines did they read? And that's great information still to today, but how are they consuming this media? So as I'm starting to go down a customer journey, and getting to know my customers more and more, the more precise I can target my media buys and my, my marketing as a whole. I love what you talk about with choreography and business, right? Your operations and your marketing working together. And data is a big part of this because when you have, when you're collecting data on the operational side and you're collecting data on your marketing side, that's when your marketing is actually going to be fueled better. The stories that are coming out of your operations, the stories and the data that are coming out of your um, everyday collection of information on your customer is then how you're going to be able to fuel your marketing even that much better. I love that. That is so true. And, and being able to gain that data is huge. You know, a lot of times you hear from uh, the marketers out there and the, the gurus that you should niche in and mm -hmm. you should really identify your uh, target buyer. And we found so often that this is not something that a newer business can do right. because they don't know who it they is. And it is they accidentally will go get this pretend person that they created as an avatar and they actually succeed because the concept is not bad. Right. It's just not appropriate all right. the time. And so they get this client and when they get the client, they go, oh my gosh, if I get 20 more of those, I think I will die. Right. So they actually don't want that client. So I, I love the idea that we could target and identify our best client. And, yes. and I heard you say that, and I heard you sneak that in there is with the clients that we're getting and with the clients that we're pulling in targeting our best client. How do you do yes. that? How do you dig that out of the client or out of the person looking for that? How do you well, do what your best client is? I'm a big believer that when, you, when you're new in business or if you've been in business for 30 years, test multiple niches and where you want to go. I am. I do believe that niches make riches. I do believe that. I believe that the more you narrow down and you do find your persona and individual customer that you're trying to go after, that avatar that you're looking for, um, there's so much we can do. And I'll talk to you. I'll talk a little bit further about what we can do once we know who that avatar is and how we can go after it and really hone in your media spend. Um, and really strategically target them. But in order to identify that, you have to start seeing, okay, who are the customers that I like to work with? Who are the customers that we find the most success with? Who, as a business owner, do I wake up every morning and going, I loved that project. That was fun. Whether it's in professional services, whether it's in any type of retail, what is it that I like the most about our company that we offer? And then who is the customer best fit for that? So test out a few different audiences, test out and see what works, especially in those beginnings. Or if you're later on in a business and you've been around for 30 years and you're that medium sized business, but you're going, you know, in today's world, I've really got to figure out where our lane is and where we focus and who we are. Test it, test and look at the data you have. 
if you've been around for 30 years, you've got data in front of you. You just don't realize it. Right. You, you just may not be seeing it as clearly as possible. Right. Look at your sales. You can look at the ones that I love is when somebody starts looking at their sales and like, actually, I didn't realize I was doing this much in repairs. I didn't realize I was doing this much in, um, you know, detail or, you know, whatever it is. I'm, I'm, you know, more using the car kind of analogy in that. But what about in retail? I didn't realize that in this very specific product line that was working so well. That's an audience I can go after. So it's actually, and the biggest thing is business owners go, well, how do I find time to even do this? How do I even find the time to sit down? Because we wear a million hats and it's exhausting. Being an entrepreneur can be very exhausting and very lonely. But at the end of the day, think about if you could find 10 more of your perfect customers, if you're in professional services, and you know that if I find 10 more just like this client, like my life sounds great. Like they are great to work with. It's a partnership. We work together well. However, you're aligning that out. That's where then you're like, okay, let me niche in there. Let me seek in there. Let me lean into that just a little bit. And leaning into a few niches to test it out is okay. Because a lot of times people go, I don't want to niche down. I don't want to do, you know, it's okay to niche down, but maybe test a few niches, test a few and see where you're best fit and best suited. Um, but then we can get into how you target your avatars once you do figure that out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. So you mentioned earlier that you've been in the game for a while. So you, oh, you've, yeah. you've yeah. learned the, the guts and the heart and soul of traditional media back in the day. Yep. And, you know, there's been a lot that's changed over the last 15 years. And, and even in the last five, things are, are changing massively. But I've seen a bit of a trend of businesses going back to some of that traditional media from the digital side of things. What have you seen in that space and in that area? I say it all the time. Traditional is not dead. You just have to know how to marry it with digital. So what we saw actually during the pandemic um, were new patterns of media consumption. Media sure. consumption was already at an all time high. We were already high consumers of media and of information. Uh, what ended up taking place and happening was uh, we then we were we were consuming media at this level. And then the pandemic happened and we wanted to gather as much information because that's what human nature is as possible. So our consumption went here. But because the pandemic lasted as long as it did, it wasn't a two week time frame. We're talking new habits that were then consumed. Wow. So we still are consuming you know, traditional platforms. We may be consuming them in a different way, but we're still consuming them. Uh, mail made a huge comeback during this time frame. But the key piece is we cannot. And so this is getting back to once you've identified that key and that ideal customer, that right size customer, that customer that you really want to go after and building that avatar for them. We can't ignore the digital tactics that we have today that actually can marry with our traditional tactics. So that's in programmatic targeting and knowing exactly how we can go in and all these data sets, find a good partner that knows what they're doing in this area. You'll be surprised that they're, it, it's not as expensive as you think. You're going to be able to find a good partner in that space. Um, and all day long, that's what we do is we go in and we target programmatically our avatars that we want to go after. We know who the customers are and we want to go after them and that's where they are. So whether they're in traditional television, traditional radio, print, outdoor, I can also, now things are starting to move where I'm programmatically bidding even those. And so you're able to start building those data sets with that. Um, but in the digital space, we're talking streaming television, streaming audio, podcasts, uh, display, uh, all the above that goes into it that you're, you're trying to reach those those individuals and those avatars. So it's very important that traditional, each tactic needs to be used for its strength. So traditional should not be dismissed, but we need to be looking at how are we even better? How are we marrying traditional and digital together? How are we doing that together? And in, in that precise pro programmatic targeting. I love that. You know, with fear of getting too far down in the weeds, let's take something like direct mail yes. and merging that as you were talking about with the more digital what are what are some of the ways that somebody would do that? Like I know you're 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 in the forefront of the innovation yeah. of all that. So what are ways that you would do that merging of those two uh, elements together? So it's actually one of my that my favorite examples is taking direct mail and um, the precision targeting tools that we use. So we've been using these tools for us. We've been using them for 
over 10 years. Um, it, some AI, I like to say dr human driven AI. AI is only as good as the information that you're giving it, frankly. Um, and so it's developing those tools. But in that, how are we using data sets to programmatically bid digital and then pair it with a direct mail piece? So now in today's world with some of the tools that we've developed and we've grown, I can target down to an address. I can target down to a street. So you have a mail list that we're going to target as well to then go to is, and make sure that then the digital is working with it together. I'm going to be able to take this address and this individual that we know is on a list of ours that we want to target. Either it's a past customer or it's a data set that we know is available to us. Now I can take this data and I can marry it and see where their digital habits are. What are they doing digitally that I can make sure that we're reaching them the same way? This is the rule of frequency. This is the rule of constantly being in front of your, your customer, right? That, that's not new. We've been doing that for 30 years. We've been doing that for way longer than that. My career, it's been, it was a frequency of three. Now you're wanting to shoot for a frequency of seven to nine, right? Because right. the more you're in front of them, the better. So how are we taking the rule of reach and frequency and using this together, which is a traditional thought process, but how am I then doing it in the digital space? So I'm taking these mail, these mail addresses, these uh, direct mail campaigns, and I'm pairing digital with it, with their streaming television, with their streaming audio, with their podcasts, with their display, what they're reading, native advertising, what articles they're reading in their home, multi-device tracking, retargeting once they're on and seeing things. And then that's building this full omni-channel approach that we really truly can use in today's world that frankly, I wish we had 25 years ago. We didn't have this. We didn't have this ability to be able to do it 25 years ago because the technology wasn't there. Now we've developed it, now we've grown it. And those of us that have been in the forefront of it, we're constantly, it changes every day, constantly adding to it of the abilities of what we're able to do. I love earlier that you said that it's a lot more affordable now than a lot of people would think. And I guess the the question that's probably started to pop up in our listeners' minds is, what does that mean? Do I have to be a $50 million company to come and do this stuff? Or, or if, you know, if we have some of our startups that are listening, are they, is this something that they should look at to, to start to add into their strategy, even that early on when they're, yep. when they're in startup mode? Absolutely. Anybody who has a customer should be looking at this and anybody who has a customer can afford this in some way or another. It is finding a partner, find a partner like ours. We'll have, I offer this to any podcast listener that hears me on a podcast. I'll have a, an initial conversation with you, no cost at all. Sure. And talk through, what are you looking for? What, what are you currently doing? We'll analyze that. And then we'll go from there. And that's a, we offer that all the time. Why? Because I genuinely believe that we grow together and that's how, that's how anybody in business should be thinking. But where, if you think that, okay, I can't afford it. For us, we work with the smallest of the small to the largest of the large. You know, we're in the tens of hundreds of millions of placement, but we're down in the thousands also. And right. that's okay because every brand has its own individual goals of what it's looking for, right? And every brand can't spend, you know, a hundred million dollars on a campaign. And not everybody, but you, the cool thing is in today's world, you have the same tactics available to you when you find a right partner who can help you sure. not at that hundred million dollar ticket, right? But you can build it for what you need it to build it to where you need it to be. So if you're small, if you're medium, it doesn't matter. And actually in today's world, what I would at, offer and look at is let's do an analysis of what you're currently doing. Because I promise there, there are dollars that just need to be tweaked. You're spending more money than you realize already on your marketing. And maybe it's not the best way to spend your money in today's market. So let's look and analyze that and say, okay, what's the best way? Actually, let's take a step back. Let's look at it at a different level. And let's say, okay, let me think what else can we do with that money? What are things that maybe we can, maybe you have an amazing killer mail program, but maybe you're only getting a return of a certain amount, but the same data set is returning and returning and returning. Okay. Cut that data set in half, take some of that budget and let's pair it with some digital on the same audience and which is working for you over and over and over again. Let's magnify that. Let's multiply that. So these are all the tactics that we need to be marrying an omni-channel approach, but don't be scared of sticker shock because you actually will be surprised 
and how much more you can afford. And then here's another thing, Michael, that I love to preach on all the time to these to entrepreneurs. At the end of the day, you guys need to realize that your hour is valuable. You have a dollar amount on your head for your hourly wage, whether you realize it or not. And every hour you're not doing something to actually put back into the business, think strategically, think on whatever mindset that you need growth and 10 years down the road and where you are in sales is a dollar that you need to be looking and saying, you know what, someone else can handle that. And that's okay. And don't be afraid of that because bring in collaborations, but bring in people that can help you and report to you regularly of what's happening. So you can brainstorm it and let it give yourself those extra tools as an entrepreneur. Right. Is there, I know the answer to this, but I, I think it's important to just ask it and, and say it because I, I would imagine that this again is another thought going through people's heads. Is there a type of business that this isn't good for? I mean, is it not good for e-commerce or is it not good for mm-hmm. uh, for any particular business or or is this pretty much across the board? If you're in business, you need it. If you have if you have a customer, this is something you need to be thinking about, right? Marketing is marketing has been around for the ages, whether sure. it I mean for for thousands of years. We're not talking like marketing is just a 200 year old thing. No, marketing has been around forever. We just call it different things at different times. And if you have a product that is being sold to someone, there is some form of marketing and media in today's world. Everyone is consuming media. We're not talking about days where no one was consuming anything. We are over consumers globally on media and our media impressions are so high. And if we are not thinking through that of every customer somewhere and even so I, I talk to people that, you know, are professional services that are back to professionals. So like, let's say you're targeting C-suite um, and you're targeting C-suite uh, legal firms and things like that. I'm, you know, throwing out hypotheticals. People go, well, they don't have time to look at ads or they don't know how to t-. think of the strategies that you can do outside of just when they're at work or outside of where they need to be. They're human beings also. And sometimes their brains psychologically are thinking things when they're not at work about the law firm or about what they're doing. So if you have a customer, yes, you absolutely need to be thinking about using these types of tactics. And is it expensive for you to try to bring these all in house? Yes. But that's why I find a good partner that can help you with it and guide you down that path. It's going to be less money for you and finding a partner that can do programmatic for you as opposed to trying to bring it all in house. That is a multi-million dollar investment. Go to a partner that's already made that multi-million dollar investment and is doing it well. Right. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've sparked the curiosity of so many listening already. And, and I love to ask, what is it like? What's it like if some uh, one of our listeners says, you know what? I think I'd like to check out what Marianne is doing. What's the what's the process look like? What is the uh, how's it work out for you? Well, like I said, any listener that hears this, reach out. Um, our website is mosaic.agency forward slash contact. Sure. That comes straight to my email and reach out and we will schedule um, a, an initial call and we're here to have a conversation with you. So that initial call, no charge. Let's ha- I love to talk to business owners. I have a soft spot for small and medium sized businesses that really want to grow or really want to take it to the next level. Startups, love startups, all the above in this category. So have those conversations. And really then from there, it is, it's a very, to probably a detriment, we become your in-house marketing team for you. That's what we love to do. We love to go the extra mile and be a part of it for you and be part of it with you. Um, that, you know, some people will advise me, oh, you're too, you get too into it with them. No, cause, cause I have loyal customers and we're here long-term and we have loyal customers. Let our team be there for you. So it is a journey that we go the extra mile for you of figuring out what are those business problems that you're looking to solve? And then how do we solve that? How do we build the right thing for you to be able to solve that? Um, but reach out, reach out, get, um, get in contact with us again, mosaic.agency forward slash contact and reach out to us. We're willing to have that initial conversation. Pick our brains. It's what we do literally every day is help small and medium sized businesses. I love that. Well, guys, go check out mosaic.agency and talk to Marianne and see what they can do for you. Because if you have a customer, then you need this stuff. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Uh, we really appreciate you being on the show today and joining us, and it's been an absolute pleasure. But before I let you go, 
uh, can you leave us with some sage wisdom? Oh, uh, sage some, wisdom. Some last words for us before we head out. So I'm going to go more of the business route than I am going down the marketing route and the media route. But as business owners, be true to yourself. Listen to your gut. No, I, I see the picture of an anchor behind you. And I say this all the time. This is something that's so important to me. Know where your anchors are. There are things that are good anchors. That's your family. That's your values. That's who you are, are as a human being and as a person. And then there are anchors that are holding you back. Know the difference and know which ones you need to cut loose and knows, know which ones that are holding you grounded in who you are. And that's the be true to yourself as a business owner. I love that. Great. Yeah. We're going to take that and run with it. <laughs> Guys, I appreciate y'all listening today and joining us. Uh, Marianne, thank you so much for being here. And as usual, all of you listening, keep choreographing your business. There's not a time when you can stop. So until next time, we'll see you on the Business Choreography Podcast mm -hmm. on the next episode. Take care. Thanks for joining us today. Want more business choreography? Check out our website at bizchoreo.com to find out more. And find out how the choreography for your marketing operations and sales can raise your revenue and create more impact. Remember, every business needs choreography.